permanent capital, non-redeemable capital, if you will. Why is it so important? It's important because it compounds and grows. It allows us to serve our customers in a different way. In fact, if you look at real estate, we were in the opportunistic space. Buy it, fix it, sell it, send the money back. Some of our big investors said to us, hey, that's great, but that's a small portion of what we do in real estate. Can you give us long duration capital that's in the ground the whole time, we'll take lower returns, operate with lower leverage, and we get the benefit of decades of compounding. And so we moved into that space. We've managed to do a great job delivering for investors, and we're growing rapidly. It's grown from zero five years ago to 30 plus billion dollars today. Of permanent capital. Permanent so that's capital. still less than 10% of your total Correct. Well, Although, where do you think it'll be five years from now? Well, I think um, Ken Kaplan, who co-runs our real estate business today, said over the next several years it could grow to $60 billion plus, which is a doubling from where it is today. And we also talked about, from a revenue standpoint, going from $250 million today to more than a $1 billion in the next few years. So the potential on this, on infrastructure, our credit PDC, a whole range of these perpetual capital activities, the potential is quite big. Life sciences is an example of this tilt, as I'm using your words here, toward growth and tech. What else belongs in that camp? Well, I think backing up, the reason why you want more exposure to growth is we're moving out of this environment of rates coming down, which we've been in for 30 years. And in an environment of rates going up, you're less likely to see multiple expansion. And so to drive earnings value or drive value growth, you need an increase in earnings. So where does the growth come from? Life sciences, tech and growth equity, which is an area we've invested in, in private equity and tactical opportunities, but we could do more there. Asia, which you mentioned, which is growing two and a half times as fast as the rest of the world. So I think as a firm, we'll be moving even more in that direction. We just raised two large funds in Asia in that regard. Tony James put up a slide on Friday listing a number of other initiatives that he said are already underway. So let's go through them, and you can tell me a bit more about what Blackstone's doing. Capital markets. Capital markets, today we serve, we touch a ton of transactions. I don't want to add it up, but it's in the several hundred billion dollars a year. Through that, we get a lot of market insights. I think we could create some value doing that. We have a capital markets activity, which helps our customers today. I think we could do more, but we want to be sensitive to not being an asset-heavy company. We've run our business balance sheet light. That's going to continue. 